Good morning. The Packers are up. Three to zero. That's what I just looked at on my phone. <laughs> it's okay. And I addressed appropriately. Green is the color of the season, apparently. So we're liturgically and athletically correct. Welcome. Welcome to St. John. Whether you're here for the very first time, whether you've been here many times, you are welcome here. I'm going to have Jana go right now um, because she has something to say. Okay, I hope it's okay that I say that I'm excited for the third graders and the four-year-olds. So if you are four years old or three years old or five years old and you know some, or you know someone who is, we would love to welcome you to Angel Band, which happens right after this service for 10 to 15 minutes. And then you can um, go down to Sunday school if you like. Um, parents are welcome. Um, what else? Um, if you've never been there, it's okay to come now or to drop in whenever. You don't have to start like when school starts at September and keep going. So we just would love to have some more three, four, and five-year-olds come and sing some songs and um, using music to praise Jesus. So that's it. Thank you, Jana, and thank you for doing this. Um, of course, uh, even when we just have a couple of kids, it is certainly fun, but sometimes more fun with more numbers. So again, um, if you're watching online as well, or you know of a neighbor who has um, just a very energetic young person, three, four, or five, um, tell them, hey, you should go to St. John on Sunday because we have an angel band. And as Jana mentioned, today is the day when our third graders and our four-year-olds will receive a Bible, a Bible that is just for them from us, a gift. One of the things that we say when we make our promises in baptism is that we'll put the word into the hands of those newly baptized. So that's what we do today. A few other announcements. Um, first of all, you may have noticed that um, the slide went through that said rescheduling of the October gatherings for conversation. So what I realized when I looked at October, even when I looked at November and December, is that we are all very busy. And there are lots of wonderful things happening in this community. For example, this afternoon, the Glenn Miller Orchestra will be at the Cal Center, and I know many of you will go. So instead of saying, well, then race over here for a conversation with me, I say, stay there, enjoy the music, and in January, come here on Sunday afternoons for conversations that help us know one another better. Um, so we're just going to, to push that off until the new year. And speaking of things that you should not put off, um, if you are uh, contemplating or know of someone who you think might be a wonderful leader in this church, we do have openings on our council. We have openings on our foundation board and on our cemetery board. The green sheet, little, it's a little card, located in the narthex on the left by the Welcome um, Center is how you nominate yourself. If you think someone else is be wonderful, you take the card to them and say, I think you'd be a great leader. Will you consider being nominated? So ask first. But all good things. And that is actually, we'd like those back by October 16th. So, um, so if you haven't yet grabbed one of those cards, please do. Other announcements for the good of this group? I do have prayer requests, so. All right, prayer requests. We sent out the message, but maybe you didn't see it, um, that John Murphy, member of this congregation, a wonderful uh, community member, someone involved in so many things, has, has died, died this past week. And we will have the celebration of his life, a memorial service here at St. John, on Tuesday. Tuesday, October 11th, the service will be at 11. So there you go. That's easy to remember. There will be a brief visitation for about an hour before the service, beginning at 10. 
And then following the service, we will have a lunch downstairs. So, um, so it's a day to be together with John's family, with his daughter Deanne, and to remember his life. So prayers for them as they grieve. As well, I give prayers of thanksgiving for Kate Klingenmeyer and continued prayer um, as she, who received a lung transplant, continues to heal and progress. Uh, at Freighter Hospital in Milwaukee. I'll be sending that address out again. One of the things her daughter told us is that your notes, um, whether they be on the Caring Bridge site, so I'll give the link again to that, or ones that you mail, that's what's getting her through. That's what's encouraging her to continue to work at therapy. Um, and, and so we'll do more of that. That's what we do really well. Are there other prayer requests you bring? Seeing no other announcements or prayer requests, I invite you to rise, your body or your spirit, for our call to worship. Oh, I'll recognize all of our faith formation stuff, even though it's kind of in the beginning here. We're going to do it at the third grade Bible time, so don't worry. We'll recognize you all too. Let's do our call to worship now. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, to know and proclaim Jesus Christ, and as disciples, reach out in love. Let us worship the Lord. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points us, oh, my, my eyes jumped, to the new way of life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen our gathering hymn this morning. So appropriate. Now thank we all our God. It's 840. You can follow on the screen or in your hymnal.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. It's time for our special music.
choir makes their way back to the pews, and I dare you not to be singing that all day, Deanna will come up and begin our morning reading. Naaman, a Syrian general, suffers from leprosy. In this passage, Elisha miraculously cures his illness, but only after Naaman realizes, with the help of his servants, that he also needs healing for his pride. This foreign general then acknowledges the sovereignty of the God of Israel. A reading from 2 Kings, the fifth chapter. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his, servants, but his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more, when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 111 responsively. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great Great are your works, works, O Lord, Lord, pondered pondered by by all who delight delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever, 
Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine? Where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to him, Get up, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And Ben's going to come up, but before we present the Bibles, Ben can still come up because one of the things that go hand in hand with the giving of the word is the exploration and the learning about the word. So that happens here at St. John in a couple ways. It happens from the time our children are four, roughly. Well, it should happen from birth at home. But as well, we begin with four-year-olds to give them the word in the form of a story Bible and with families in faith formation doing activities around these stories. If you are someone right now, a family who participates in our faith formation program, put your hand up. Even higher. Okay, yeah. Faith formation happens after church on Sunday. And what we do here at St. John is say everybody's a part of it, not just our young children, not just a couple Sunday school teachers, but the entire family. And we're all a family, so we're a part of it too. Now, once our young people grow a bit, get a little older, we have confirmation which is where they go deeper in study. With a study Bible, they get in third grade, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth this year, a lot of grades, participate in our life program, our confirmation program, and they are accompanied by first small group guides when they come to class on Wednesday nights. If you are leading a small group or participating, put your hand up. They're tired. They're resting from Wednesday, so they're not here. But we have several parents who have agreed to be with our small groups as they discuss stories and what's going on in their lives. And then 8th and ninth graders this year do a mentor year. So one individual from the congregation partners with one of our 8th or ninth graders, and they meet both here and outside of church They get to know one another better. If you are a mentor or have ever been a mentor, raise your hand. Yeah, that's going to be quite a few. This is an integral part, as are all the others, of making sure that our young people know how much we value them, how much God loves them, 
and how much they are a part, an important, invaluable part of what happens here. So that's the recognition of our faith formation and our confirmation program. Thank you. Woo-hoo. Now, I'd like to invite up. We're doing 4K. So if you are a young 4K person, so that would be four years old, roughly, or you're in 4K, come on up here. Or if you've never received a story, yes, Bible, come on up here. And your parents can come too. Look, they're like, do I go without my parent? Come on up, parents. Families can come too. And if you are a third grader and probably have this Bible, but are now ready for this next one, you can come up too. So parents and students who are in third grade, you come up too. We just want to give time for our, our wee ones. Yeah. So, yeah, parents, not just you can come up, you have to come up. (laughs) You have to come up. (laughs) All right. Yay. I know. I'd sleep for joy, too. All right. So what we like to do, and Ben can kind of say a few things, is we like to have parents present to put into the hands, because again, it's part of that promise that parents make to their children to put the word into the hands. We like to have them do this. So should we start with our four? Okay. Ben will hand the Bibles to the parents. (laughs) All right. And Ben is a parent of a third, so he gets to be there too. So these are Bibles that are perfect for the age of the young person who's receiving them. Our story Bibles have words and pictures. Guess what? Our study Bibles for our third graders do too. As we grow, we look and engage and learn about the word in different ways. And so each of these books is a slightly different book with the same stories, geared towards the age of the person who's receiving it. A gift, but one that should be used. So on the two little tables, they're kind of behind some of our third grade families, but you can look at them on your way um, home to your seat from communion, are a bunch of different Bibles. And the things that I encourage all of our adults, but most importantly, our young people to do, is open them up. Use them. Not just when you come here to faith formation or, or when you're in confirmation, when you're old enough, at home too. And guess what? You know how in the library, like they don't want you to write in the book, probably. These are your books. You can and should write in them. You should take a highlighter, highlight the things that you find maybe puzzling or maybe exciting in the book. There are maps. Take a look at them. Use it. These pages should be well-worn. And I'm going to hold up just one Bible right here that I put on a table. So this, (laughs) I'm going to show it right here to all of our people. It it looks like it's pretty well-worn, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this was my grandfather's Bible, and he was born in 1902. So this is an older Bible, but he used it. He wrote in it. It's got... It it looks well used, as you can probably see. And it has his name on the inside from when it was presented to him. Porter Jarvis, 1920. So, again, these can last and should. So, Ben and families, is there anything special you want to say? I am going to do a blessing, and then we're going to have the parents hand the Bibles. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. All right, so we're going to bless these Bibles, and then parents are going to hand them to their student, and then you're going to go sit down, and you're going to open them up, right? Okay, let's pray. Receive the word of God, we pray. Learn the stories found in the Bible. Study its words. The stories belong to us all. These words speak to us all. They tell us who we are. They tell us who we belong to, one another, and that we are people of God. 
We, as the church, rejoice in this step on your journey uh, with God. We pray God will guide you, your family, and us as you use this Holy Bible in your home, in your church school classes, and in our worship. We will learn together and grow in our love for God's Word. The Word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thanks be to God. And parents, you can present your Bible to your student. Yay! And we can clap. Clapping all around. Thank you. Thank you. And you can sit back down. I mean, I love having the company, but you probably don't want to stand up here this entire time. (laughs) And we have just a few extra. One of the wonderful things is that when people come into the church, it doesn't have to be in September or October, anytime, we always have the word available to them. And so... This was pretty much the sermon, right? But I will say, the readings that Deanna read and that I read are perfect examples of the Bible and what it can do in our imagination. Each of the stories today had kind of a a common link in in a person or people who were experiencing some, some pretty deep trouble due to a physical ailment. Right? Naaman had the, the skin, a skin disease, similar to maybe leprosy, which is the 10 lepers from the gospel. And we can picture what that might mean. We maybe have even experienced what it means to have something that keeps us apart from our community. And in the story, we learn, as we always do, that God wants us to be close to one another. Now, in the Gospel of Luke, those 10 lepers, before they're healed by Jesus, they would have had to stay at a distance because of their condition. And they would have had to announce themselves as they came close to people. They would have to say, unclean, unclean. The lesson we learn, and it's the lesson every Sunday, I will say, is that the love of God transcends, is stronger than all of the things we put between ourselves to keep us apart. And so Jesus heals not just the ten, but one who is a Samaritan, who not just through their skin condition, but also by who they are, would not have been accepted in the community. And yet Jesus says, you are made whole. You are beloved of God. You are a part of me, of we, of us. And so if nothing else, every time our four-year-olds and our third graders and you open the Bible, that message of love should come just pouring out. Amen. Now, our hymn of the day, and we can remain seated for this hymn, but we sing it together. It's Healer of Our Every Ill. And uh, I'm not quite sure what page number it is. Let's see. I will turn and find it. It is 612, hymn 612 in the red hymnal. Or you can follow along on the screen. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
I invite you to rise as we, with the whole church, confess our faith with the words found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for our bishops, for pastors, for all who lead in the church. Inspire these leaders to proclaim your mighty deeds that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest, Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, our nation, our world, who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized, whether it be by race or ethnicity or religion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer, most especially help Kay as she journeys in her healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick. We most especially give thanks for our parish nurses, for Bev, for Kathy, for Andrea. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And as always, in keeping with God's commandments that we pray for others, we pray for those who celebrate their birthday this month, we pray for Tracy, and we pray for Willard. We also pray for a partner in ministry for the mission of Rockdale Lutheran Church, located in Cambridge, Wisconsin. We keep Kay and the family of John in our prayers. And now, Lord, we fill this place with the prayers of our hearts, maybe unspoken, but always heard. God of grace, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks that for your faithful people who've gone before us, they've gone to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. 
and with grateful hearts. We now commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You can turn and wave to your neighbor, give them a peace sign, and then you can be seated. We will take the morning offering. as we sing our thanksgiving. God, gracious, merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish us at your table. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come taste and see. You may be seated. This morning, we will receive communion up front, and Jim is going to be assisting. The usher will indicate when you come forward, you will receive a wafer. We have a gluten-free alternative. Simply ask, and you will be given. You take and you eat right away, and then proceed to the tray of cups, which Jim will have. There are some cups with darker colored wine, some cups with light juice. Indicate the one you prefer. Take, drink, and then on your way back, look at the table of Bibles and put your cup in the little basket, and then you can be seated back in your pew. Come, for all is ready.
I invite you to rise. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of the abundant table, you've refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And blessing as you go out to your day. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is baptized and set free. It's 453. Again, follow along in the hymnal or on the screen. We sing together. It's halftime, and the score is 20 Green Bay and 10 the other team, so woohoo! And now, go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>